I'll do ability to you or not. It doesn't matter, but I'll, I'll record it and then it sounds like I'm not going to. I'm not quite a technical amoeba, but I'm not too far from it.
this was uploaded on 13th of July last year, and Appendix A and Appendix B were um, uploaded on the. Oh, see. That thought might be for that. Have you got a date? Because you've got that. You've got the piece of paper. Oh, it's on the website. They're easy to find. So they are publicly available. And they but are they are not attached. To the yeah, they don't actually have the appendix. Appendix. Well, the downloads for those appendices are eight. The downloads for the minutes are fourteen, which means somebody has not looked at the whole. Mr. Wally, your point is noted. Please sit down. Uh, well, I'm going to point out that, that so this isn't a section. The chairman's report for last year includes several paragraphs which were lifted in their entirety. In Peter Eccleston's report from 2019. This is not an open forum, Mr. No, Connor. this isn't. If these are issues with the minutes the meeting, for last year. Then I shall call a halt to the meeting and have you removed. Please sit down and we will follow the agenda. Gil, I propose that we accept the minutes from the meeting which took place on the 25th of April 2022. I'm happy to second. Howard Marsh seconds. And you were both present. And we were both present at the meeting. Okay. And is that unanimous, uh, including all the public? Um, yeah, I should take a vote. Yeah, can I take a vote, please? So we accept that the minutes are a true and accurate record for anyone who attended last year. Great. Four attended, or four agree. Does, that, does anybody not agree? Does anybody object to anyone who was here last year? One object. I'm assuming that's cool. Yes. Right. Well, thank you for naming me. Yeah. Thank you. It's the one you stood in front of your own camera. Sorry? You were stood in front of your own camera. I think I was out of shot. We'll move on just like, I was just going to sign the minutes. Tasks. 
These posts are completely untrue, and as, as her employer and friend, Dunchurch Parish Council stand beside her to stamp out this minority behaviour and are seeking legal advice to do so. This is not acceptable in any format. Jill has vast experience as a clerk and RFO and is an asset to our community. She strives to do her best for the community and I'm certain the majority of residents have found her willing, able and more than capable to assist in any query they may have. She is not frightened to seek advice from others if, they feel, if she feels they have more specific knowledge. The most important thing of all is not to forget that Jill is a person. This constant barrage of abuse and negative comments does affect her and has a detrimental effect on her well-being. In summary, our councillors are very forward-thinking about the work they do. We all have a positive attitude and we can look at any suggestion or option put forward to us unless we are told there is a specific reason why we can't. Decisions taken will not always satisfy every member of the community and we are not beyond question. However, our councillors and staff should be treated with courtesy and respect. Dunchurch Library. The continued success of our library is totally dependent on a number of dedicated volunteers and I would formally like to thank them for their ongoing hard work. We would love for some new volunteers to come forward to undertake the regular or even the odd shift. We have noticed numbers dropping recently and really need your help to continue to operate. The more committed volunteers we have, we may seek to provide additional opening hours. The Parish Council has secured funding to maintain the operation of the library for some years to come. Councillor John Marlow is the council lead for our community managed library, assisted by our RFO Becky, and they continue to work with our volunteers, volunteers with regards to any changes, volunteer assistance and any building issues that may arise. Youth Service. The Parish Council remains dedicated to the success of the Youth Club and will continue to support it mainly from Section 106 monies awarded specifically for youth provision. The Youth Club is currently run by Rugby Play Rangers and operates on a Thursday evening at the Village Hall and Sports Field. Crime, antisocial behaviour and security in Dunchurch. Generally, levels of crime in our parish remain relatively low. However, there have been one or two incidents, incidents of criminal damage. There have been a couple of incidents of damage in Arkwright's play area which have been swiftly dealt with. The Parish Council would not like to see any youth treated as criminals at a young start in life, but would like to work with parents on restorative justice should it be the case it is youth committing such damage. We are in the process of installing £60,000 worth of additional play equipment to the area and would truly like to see these isolated incidents stop from occurring. Local communications. The Parish Council website. The website is fully up and running and providing to be a real asset to the Parish Council in being able to display urgent news and keep residents informed. Facebook. Councillor Cara Martin is the dedicated social media um, councillor along with myself and Councillor Harry Marsh. Regular updates are provided across our Parish Council Facebook page, Dunchurch and Thurliston Village Notice Ball Board, Causton resident and Dunchurch residents and friends of Dunchurch pages. This provides a quick and easy way for us to interact with our residents. During this past year, we have removed the ability to comment on our posts. This was done as our posts are for information and not general discussion. Should anyone wish to make a specific comment, please email our clerk on the email address, which remains open to all, and the comment will be passed to the relevant councillor's attention. Public participation, public forum. The public participation session, also known as the Parish Parishioners Forum, has now been a part of the official agenda on the monthly Parish County me Council meetings for some years. Any resident is invited to attend a meeting, to give your views, ask questions, etc. prior to the meeting formally starting. You do not have to wait until a meeting to approach us. Please contact the clerk via her email address or telephone number available and she will do her absolute best to assist you. Newsletter, Dunchurch Magazine. In January 2023, we made the decision to stop producing our article in the Dunchurch magazine produced kindly by FODS, which we have done over the last 12 plus months. We initially utilised the magazine in an attempt to make regular contact with the whole parish. However, with dis after discussion with some of our residents, it became apparent this was not always the best way to communicate with them. The cost of submission, additional copies and additional distribution to the already provided copy was £600 per quarter. 
we decided to look at alternative ways to communicate more effectively, whilst on a wider scale to ensure we cover all of the parish residents. This work will continue during the next few months. Neighbourhood Development Plan. I would like to thank Councillor Paula Podervin for his hard work prior to his departure on the Neighbourhood Plan. The plan will progress this year with the assistance of consultants. We decided to utilise the skills of, and expertise of a consultant to produce our plan. Our RFO Becky is in the process of applying and securing a grant of up to £18,000 minus monies already spent in order to produce the plan in this coming year. We will, however, need help and assistance of volunteers for our community, so please get in touch if you would like to help. The local plan. You will now all be aware of the warehouses that have already been built and the new warehouses under construction on the outskirts of the village of Thurliston. We continue to work with our colleagues from Thurliston Parish Council to ensure work is conducted in strict accordance to planning regulations. Traffic and pollution are our main concerns as a result of major development in the region. We, are great, we were grateful to have two members of the Tritax team attend a recent parish council meeting where we granted permission on the instalment of four AMPR cameras, which are automatic number plate recognition cameras, uh, which co to cover the cameras on our lamppost. All large vehicles forming part of the new development, which are delivery drivers, will not be permitted to enter the village. This will be in the contract of the leaseholders using the warehouses. Any driver who is caught on cameras will be personally fined. Should this not have the desired effect, we were all assured there will be discussion with the leaseholder regarding their ten tenancy. I'm nearly there, I promise. <laughs> Local authority dialogue. We are fortunate to have contact and liaison with Councillor Peter Eccleston, Councillor Deepa Roberts and Councillor Howard Roberts during the last 12 months. Liaison with and access to local council officials is a regular part of the parish council's activities. I would like to thank the councillors for their help and assistance. Parish amenities, playgrounds. The play facilities are regularly inspected and faults and vandalism are rectified expeditiously. Councillor Cara Martin is the dedicated lead councillor on the playgrounds and has spent a vast amount of time gathering quotes to provide the new, robust and more importantly, inclusive play equipment for all. This project is currently underway and aims to be completed by the mid to the end of May 2023. Village Handyman. Sadly, I report that Matt, Matthew Lee passed away in October last year. Mm. Matt was a lovely, kind and caring man who is and will continue to be sorely missed. You would often see him wearing his green hat with his rubbish bag in hand around the village keeping everything ship -shaped. A quiet, gentle soul who always had a smile and time and courtesy to stop and chat despite how busy he was. His support and dedication over the years is greatly appreciated. We will be looking at various options to dedicate a memorial to Matt in the coming year. Darren Stiles, who came to us to help us during Matt's illness, continues to provide us with an excellent service. We thank him for his efforts during the year. Darren also provides us with updates as to the general condition of the play equipment and is often seen picking up litter in the village. I would personally like to thank him for conducting any of my random tasks at very short notice. I would also like to thank Phil Freeman and Bob Collins for their help in assist and assistance in producing the village Christmas display and to Phil, who is now our resident flagmaster, <laughs> self-titled flagmaster. <laughs> Our volunteer groups, I would personally like to thank all the volunteers who work to make our parish a fantastic place to be. I'm sure the new council going forward will continue to work in harmony with you all to continue this. Personal summary, I would like to, like to thank the current parish councillors, Becky and Jill, for their hard work and support. Uh, whatever the outcome of the forthcoming election, I have the pleasure and honour to collaborate with you all. I wish you all every success in life. I would also like to thank the wonderful residents of our community, many of whom I've got to know during my term, or got to know further during my term as parish councillor and chairman. Thank you all for coming forward, talking to me and the other councillors about issues which concern you and your families. Thank you for giving us the chance to be your voice and to get things sorted. Thank you. Moving on to item five. <laughs> the Dunchurch Neighbourhood Development Plan. This report is exactly as um, was in my report, because I'm providing the update, where... Is that camera off, please, because you're videoing the public? Did the public opt out? Can you just please just take a seat? 